like guys are weird with you know well i just i feel like i have to be so careful over so many different things with guys right so so careful that's what it is yeah. i feel like so and i have to be like okay what's going on whatever you know like, yeah so careful and yeah it's, yeah but it's it's all part of a uh, part of growth you know i feel like because i was able to see my life very differently now yeah um I'm able to now I'm able to like prioritize me and mm -hmm. not prioritize trying to look for a man like that mm -hmm. is that's way in the past for me now like I feel like my priority is being happy and my, I know my kids are good because I, I take good care of them and they're good but me my priority right now is you know producing I'm in my producing freaking yeah. bug I got the producer bug I got that's a you know <laughs> I got a lot of things that I want to do. And now it's like, now everything's kind of piling up and I'm, right. I'm excited for that part of my life. And I feel like now, because um, I saw a, a podcast thing, an interview with this girl saying, you know, if you want to find, if you want to be with an interesting man, you got to make yourself as interesting. That's true. And, I, and, and yeah. how could I do that when my whole life I've been just kind of like, I want to marry. Well, you, you, but you being a hairdresser, that's a, yeah, th that's kind of a hot career. I yeah. can go, Oh, hairdressers are fun. Yeah. 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 I mean, cause it's the beauty industry. Exactly. And it's, that's kind of a fun, uh, it's a fun industry and it's interesting. It is. And I'm very knowledgeable because I'm uh -huh. an educator for that, for hair as well. I'm a hair oh. educator as well. So I, I, I've been, you know, I've been an educator for like six years. I've been a hairdresser for 13. Uh -huh. um, I, you know, I have a lot. I and that what's good about, like I said, your job is like, it's just so flexible that you could work, yeah. work it out to do comedy. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then you could book your clients within... I book, I book at least a month in advance. So wow. everything, everything is. Where's, where did, where's your salon at? In Downey. In Downey. Okay. Yeah. I ran a studio inside of a salon in Downey. That's good. And I've like had a lot clients, of, that's the hard part about comedy that nobody really ever talks about. Like, what do they do for their day job? And exactly. I think exactly like nobody ever. Ex so, um, I know some girls are now doing um, like OF. I have an OnlyFans yeah. myself. That's how yeah. I um, I have an OnlyFans. And then I have other like affiliates. I have a lot of affiliates. I yeah. have um, a monetize on my social media. That's how I pay my bills, how I'm survived. So, um, but I, I lived 10 years in LA and, um, and I was like, I had my SAG card, was trying to do the acting thing, um, did more background than anything else. Mm -hmm. Like I did get some stuff, but uh, I had to go. And that took away from me going because I had to pay rent because I had to pay bills. Now, you know, um, thanks to the Internet, I'm able to. Yeah. Yeah. Still do things, you know. So, know. so what's scared, what's what's uh, not really talked about what I don't really believe in is being a starving artist, you know, yeah. like a lot of people think like, Oh, living the dream. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm broke. I'm, I'm, you know, surviving. I'm trying to do these things, you know, trying to survive and trying. I don't really believe in that because mm -hmm. I have two kids that I'm raising. Right. And so my number one priority is making sure the bills are paid. So my thing is like, yeah, I've had slow seasons because in, in every industry there, there are very slow seasons. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? I know about so, those slow seasons. I've had that. Yeah. People don't yeah. realize. I used to think because I was a stripper, I made all this crazy money, but you do have your slow season. Oh yeah, girl. Yeah. January for me is my slower. Oh season. yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right. January is a slow season because, everybody because everyone pays. gets their hair done in December for the holidays and, and then they don't got to get their hair done for another two months. Mm -hmm. Right. So then in February is when it starts to pop off for Valentine's, Valentine's day, day. Then they're going to start coming in. Yeah. And then summer, they come in all summer for their blondes and stuff. But then in yeah. October it slows down because everyone's going back to school. It's a whole it's a whole, like, yeah. you know, I, I have this season thing down, but even though I know it's coming, it's really hard to prepare for it because I still got to pay all my bills every month the same way. Yeah. 
So, but like I've made it to where I work real hard and I make it happen. And no matter what, I make it happen. Like that's just the way my mind is wired, you know? And um, with a comedy, like, no one really talks about how expensive it is to be a comedian. Yeah, how nobody's ever really like because the touring, money you have to put into it. Oh, because some places they want you to buy uh, drinks or buy a ticket. What is it? Yeah, this? and it's it's mostly for me the gas, girl. Like, oh, okay. Like I'll have a show. I'll I'll have four shows lined up in a week. One in Hollywood, one in the inner city, one in the valley, one in the in the empire. And it's like I'm literally driving hundreds of miles and putting sixty, seventy dollars in my gas tank, you know, coming and going. It's a very expensive, like right. if you add up all the little expenses and the and the one or two drinks that you have at the at the venue and the, you know. You you gotta buy yourself a mic, a, a freaking tripod. You have to learn like it, it. Time is money for me too, so you gotta learn how to edit videos, and you have to put those out. And it's yeah, this game. This it, yeah, this, nobody it, on my podcast. They're not talking about that. You know, I realize yeah. that. Yeah, nobody's really um. That's good Getting that you brought that. that up because nobody yeah. really discusses that. Um, and no. nobody really ever. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I realized I though because I've been in the inner, but I had sex work to back it up. Yeah, you a lot of I'm people saying? don't. Most right. people, most of us don't. Most of us yeah. have day jobs. Most of us have waitressing jobs, or you know, they freelance they do a lot work. of casting people, work. Right, freelance work. Yep. Yeah, because in LA, but, it was so, when it was normal. I remember there when I lived there, which I thought it was weird. People had like four or five jobs. Mm -hmm. Like that was absolutely normal when I lived in LA. 100%. I come here to New York and uh, everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Totally. And I still have like, I just believe you need seven and seven forms of income in order to become a millionaire. That's I've been. So I have like a whole bunch of ways I make money. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I make a pretty good living with just doing hair. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I work real hard in that aspect because I have, like I said, I have my set clientele for the last 13 years. I've had my set clientele. So um, I'm very lucky in that sense. A lot of a lot of comics are broke, bitch. They're broke. <laughs> Which is another reason why I can't fuck around with a comic because they're broke. Oh, they're the, the guys are that broke. Yeah. They're just broke. They're just like, right. they're living the life of a starving artist and it's not the most attractive thing. Yeah, you're right. It's not, I'm not That's attracted true. to, to, to like broke dudes. I can't be because I'm not a broke dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I have, but I have the opposite where squares, I call them squares. Um, people that are, well, I don't know. There's people in the entertainment business. I would consider squares too, but uh, yeah. I kind of need a degenerate sometimes. I get along. I, get I can I can hold a conversation good with a degenerate because I've been I call him a degenerate. I've been a degenerate so long. And then it when you when you hang out like I forgot one time I met this couple and they it, it was just like kind of like you could I couldn't really have a conversation with them. And it was like I was no. a novelty act like I was a novelty act to them. I had a I went on a date once with this guy. Um, I don't even know why I agreed to be on this date. He was a really flashy dude. He had mm -hmm. like, he would show off a lot, all his money, he'd show yeah. off his cars and all this. I I'd don't rob know. His ass. It made me. I just robbed his me, ass. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, it made me curious to see what kind of date, right? So he took right. me to Javier's restaurant, mm -hmm. right? It was really nice. We got there, we we're talking, and I felt like I was being interviewed in like a tales of from the streets type of vibe, you know, like, oh, he was like, yeah, he I was hate like, that. Wow. You're really like a single mom. Wow. You don't have help from your ex. Wow. So you don't have millions of dollars. No. Wow. What so kind of is that? It was the most uncomfortable. It felt like an interview. Yeah. It felt like he was interviewing me and he that I was like a novelty. Right. Like, like a like, novelty. Like I don't yeah, don't treat like me like a goddamn Austin, novelty. Like, like you're really from the hood. Like, 
Oh, like yeah, like he was so shocked. What that was he? I existed. Really? Wait, it was a uh, Spanish guy or a white guy or uh, he was Latino. He was Latino, but he he I think he was like third or fourth generation. So I oh, think he was a little bit okay. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.